The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Sometimes here in the mountains, the evenings are cold and chilly, so we keep seasoned firewood, oak, and tamarack for the wood stoves and fireplaces here at the Horseshoe Ranch, headquarters of the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. But it is essential to lay in supplies of firewood before the colder weather begins, to have stocks of it stored in advance. And so it is with the spiritual life. Maintain a vital companionship with God each and every day of your life so that when hard and difficult times come, you are prepared in advance to survive adversity because of your spiritual reserves of strength and hope laid up through many months and years of fellowship with God. You will thus be prepared to endure anything which may befall you through the spiritual dynamism of your living relationship with the living God. Time and time again, in the living of your human life, you'll discover that all does not proceed as you had planned. Friendships fail. Projects collapse. Your fondest dreams and aspirations may crumble to the dust. Yet you must persevere and you must prevail. God has good uses for your life. Even in the midst of the most crushing cataclysms of human experience, I once stood beneath the awe-inspiring grizzly giant sequoia tree here at the Mariposa Grove in Yosemite National Park and listened to a forest ranger lecture on the fact that these great trees, some of them approaching 3,000 years in age, have survived countless forest fires in their lifetimes. He showed where the great grizzly giant tree had been struck by lightning, had been on fire, and the scars could still be seen, and how whole limbs the size of smaller trees had been broken off by the stormy winds and the weight of the snow. Yet still, that tree stands today, over 2,700 years in age, and still propagating new young trees. For the redwood cone, when it falls to the ground, may be pecked or eaten by birds or animals, thus dispersing their seeds, but most frequently it is forest fires which split open the cone and released the seeds to propagate new sequoias. The forest ranger said that for decades, the U.S. Forest Service thought that it must prevent fires in the great redwood groves and would rush to extinguish them each time a blazing bolt of lightning struck in the high Sierra groves. But in just a few years' time, they found that the foliage and underbrush beneath the trees had become so dense that no space remained for new seedlings to take root. And thus it was that the government forest experts learned that forest fires are in fact a part of the great plan for the growth and propagation of the giant redwoods. First, the fires burn away the thickets of undergrowth where new trees may root and grow. And secondly, the very forest fires which may destroy old trees give birth to new trees. For the heat of the fires cracks open the seed cones, and as they split, the seeds of new trees are scattered into the rich fire-ash-laden soil beneath the trees. Thus it is that the tragedy of the forest fire actually gives life and new soil to the ancient groves of these majestic trees. And so it will be with your life. The very conflagrations which sear your soul are also creating the rich soil of new growth. The very flames which sear your heart release the seeds of new life and new growth when the fires have burnt themselves out, no matter what may happen in your life, and however bad it may seem to be. The living God can use it for your development, for your growth, and for your betterment. If you will but trust in God with all your heart, and let God's Spirit indwelling your mind renew your inner being, for God loves you with a love that will not let you go. God cares for you with an infinite compassion. God wants nothing but good for you and longs for deeper fellowship with you that you may the better comprehend his compassion and feel his forgiveness and experience his fellowship and love. You are a son or daughter of the living God, and God desires every good thing for your life. Simply in faith, give your life to the living God, and God will give you back your life, infused with a new purpose, a higher enthusiasm, a refined ethical comprehension, a new and reinvigorated sense of the joy of living as a son or daughter of God as you really are. 
have faith in God and have faith that every tragedy and mishap which befalls you can be used to God's greater good. If you will but trust God to bring forth seeds of greatness from the flames of failure and pain, just as the forest brings new redwood trees from the seared and smoldering seed cones burnt in the forest fires each year. God's will for you is good. It is good. And the better you know God, the better you will know the power of his love and the restorative, regenerative energy of his spirit to renew your life and make you whole from top to bottom, from inside to out, in the great expression of God's good will for you. Such a life of faith will be joyous, but it will have its pain as well. But the ultimate victory is faith. I can think of no man in all the annals of human history who endured more intense pain and suffering than did Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He was born in a poor land, a simple agrarian economy. As an infant, he narrowly escaped death, for a sweeping order was put out to exterminate all babies in the age category of the anticipated Messiah. He was misunderstood by his parents' religion. He was attacked by the learned religious leaders of his time as a devil or as in league with the prince of the devils. He was described as a troublemaker, an insurrectionary, As his career of public preaching advanced, he returned again to his hometown of Nazareth and narrowly escaped being thrown over a cliff by his own townspeople who were jealous of his fame and envious of his power. The chief priests and scribes in Jerusalem sent out spies and troublemakers to entrap him and mock and ridicule him. They followed his encampments from town to town and even in the countryside and beside the sea and would interrupt his loving spiritual teachings with trick questions and criticisms meant to discredit his teachings. At last, even his own family concluded that Jesus was beside himself, mentally ill. He was betrayed into the hands of the Roman troops by Judas, one of his trusted twelve apostles. He was brought before Pontius Pilate and the crowd in the courtyard was given the choice to free Jesus or Barabbas, a known criminal. But in response to the instigations of the priests and scribes and Pharisees in the crowd, they chose to free Barabbas, and of Jesus they chanted, Crucify him. A crown of thorns was pressed down upon his head. He was flogged and spat upon. His apostle Simon Peter denied him. He was forced to carry his own cross to Golgotha, the place of the skull where he was crucified, the most excruciating and painful method of execution ever devised by the mind of cruel man, and was even taunted and ridiculed as he hung dying on the cross. It seemed at times during his life that nearly everybody was against this Jesus. The religion of his ancestors, his fickle followers, his very own flesh and blood, nearly everyone was against him, it seemed. But one... The living God, who, when the time was ripe, raised Jesus up and brought him forth from the tomb to teach and preach once more, because no matter who else is against you, and even if it seems that the whole world is against you, remember this truth. If God be for you, who can be against you? And what shall it profit a man, said Jesus, if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? For a mighty ship a sail upon the sea is not navigated by taking a vote of the crew, but by taking a reading of the stars. And great lives are likewise lived by such transcendent meanings and values, not merely by the whim of popular opinion. Bear well in mind that the greatest man who ever lived, Jesus of Nazareth, was born with an order out to murder him and died by criminal execution, and every year between his birth and death there was some sort of trouble in his life. But still, he was empowered by the very power of God and lived a spiritually victorious life, Because he lived the spiritual life, he had his priorities right. He knew to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and that all other things will be added unto you. The will of God was the top priority in his life. And he taught that if the will of God is top priority in your life as well, no matter who may turn against you and who may hate and hurt you, still God will love and sustain you and support you and inspire you to carry on until your work on earth is done. And then when you are welcomed into the mansions which are on high, God will say to you, Well done, you good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. God loves you. This very moment, dare to believe that and claim that. 
God loves you and has a wonderful will for your life and the strength to empower you to do that will and to live your life in love for God and love for humanity. And that's the only way to live, in love for God and love for others. Then life begins to feel really right because you're living spiritually as you were born and created to live, as you have always longed to live as the son or daughter of God you were born and created to be. And in truth, this very instant, you really are. For free literature on the spiritual life, on these very things I've been discussing on this broadcast, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080-3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man, On Campus, Questions University Students Ask, What About the Existence of God, What About Religion and Science, These Sorts of Things, Write for This Free Literature. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. That's Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.